so the new Dell G15 Intel version is here and it packs some of the best hardware of 2022. Now it possesses so much computational horsepower that it can murder every single laptop from last year. So the main culprit behind this monstrous performance is the Core i7 Dell 700H which comes equipped with massive 14 cores out of which 6 are performance one and the other 8 are efficient cores. The GPU in this laptop is an RTX 3060 with a TGP of 130 watt. I believe Dell is worried about battery life and the thermal issue that plagued the previous generation G15 which is why they are not choosing a 140 watt 3060. From outside the G15 looks exactly the same as the previous one sharing a lot of similarity with the Alienware M15 series. The extended back portion, the vents on the sides and the form of the lid. An entirely plastic built laptop but the Alienware has a more premium in hand feel and we can't argue about that. The plastic used here is really sturdy with that said the base is really solid while the lid flexes a bit and produces weird sound when you twist it. By the way one of the reasons for this strong body resistance is the build on the inside. Unfortunately this makes the laptop weigh around 2.8 kilos which is significantly heavier than the competition. For me it's quite heavy and I don't want a 2.8 kg device sitting in my backpack when I'm on the go. And that's not only about the device itself. The charging adapter also adds an extra couple of pounds to the laptop's weight. If you want a laptop that you'd really carry around in your backpack, then you can consider this one. Otherwise, look for the options like the Nitro 5, Legion or Tough series. Then there is the base. It sports an ordinary keyboard with a number pad with a regular backlight. I can't say it's really comfortable for either typing or gaming, which is a bummer really. Especially when you take a look at the small touchpad, even though it is pretty responsive, the surface is not very pleasant to work with. Therefore, in my opinion, the laptop's keyboard and touchpad are not up to the mark. So if you plan to use a keyboard and a mouse most of the time, you can disregard this as a con. Now, on the left side, there is only one LAN port and an audio jack. And on the right, there are two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, but that's not all. All other necessary ports are on the rear, which includes USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port, an HDMI 2.1 connector, and a power plug. If you take a look at the display, it has a 15.6-inch Full HD WVA panel with a refresh rate of 165Hz. For color coverage, it has 65% of sRGB, 45% of NTSC, and a brightness level of 300 nits, making it an average looking display that would find the most of the gaming laptops and not a good option for color grading. However, it is more than sufficient for gaming and simple content creation work. Now, you might be asking what a WVA panel is. It is actually a wide wing angle display that in terms of overall quality falls in between VA and IPS because its viewing angles are a little smaller when compared to an IPS panel, but its contrast ratio is much better. It's time for some CPU benchmarks and we will begin by looking at the Cinebench R23 result which is the most popular test of them all. From this, we can see that the i7-12700H receives a single core score of 1810 points and a multi-core result of 16745 points. I am now astonished by this laptop's performance in 3D Mark Time Spy, where it earned an incredible score of 12539 points. The PC Mark 10 comes next, which evaluates fundamental functions like app loading. The result is 11280 points. Then comes the Handbrake, a program that converts video to any format. In this case, a 60-minute 4K clip took about 30 minutes to convert. Last but not the least, we have the Blender 3.2 render test, where it received a final score of 920 points. Now, let's talk about the overall conclusion of all these scores. For 4K video editing, this is the perfect go-to choice. It will be buttery smooth even with multiple layers. And if you are a student who does a lot of coding, you can easily do that in this laptop. As well as if you use Visual Code Studio, Android Studio or MATLAB, they will also work pretty well on this laptop. And in 3D rendering, it's a charm for users. It can easily run your AutoCAD, Blender or any other 3D design and animation projects. And thanks to its high multi-core results, the music production on FL Studio and Ableton Live would run excellent. How else I can access the performance of Dell G15 if I don't demonstrate my gaming powers? So let's put the RTX 3060 to the test and see how And I haven't added any more test because doing so would stress the video and make it too long. Instead, here is a list of all games with the maximum FPS and 1% low. As well as there is a 16GB of DDR5 dual channel RAM with a frequency of 4800MHz which is upgradable up to 32GB which means 16GB in each RAM slot. And as usual a 512GB of NVMe SSD, however you can't do anything for the storage upgrade 
other than replacing the SSD with a 1TB drive as there is only one SSD slot available. The battery on this device is a 56W cell that goes from 100 to 0 in just 1 hour and 50 minutes. With very minimal use like basic web browsing stuff with brightness at 250% and backlight turned off. Even for a gaming laptop, this amount of battery backup is very low. So congratulations, the award goes to the 130W Power Hungry 3060, which consumes a lot of power. However, you can extend its battery life by turning off the RTX 3060 in Device Manager under Display Adapter Settings. And you would easily get a 3.5 hours of backup. Now taking a look at the cooling setup, it comprises two heat pipes shared between the CPU and the GPU, which receives its own heat sink. In addition, there are a couple of metal heat spreaders meant for graphic memory and VRMs. One thing I find cool about the G15 is the fact that its fan draw cool air from both the bottom and the top. The vent above the keyboard is not just a fancy item. It is functional and actually radiates the heat. This results in saving of about 10 degrees Celsius. And to my surprise, the temperatures are much better than the 2021 model. It is no longer reaching the 100 degrees Celsius as last year's G15. So while gaming in the G mode enabled, the CPU reached a maximum temperature of 90 degrees, but it never exceeded that limit. While the GPU was on the cooler side with a maximum temperature of only 63.7 degrees. So even if your room temperature is at 30 degrees, you will not experience any kind of thermal issues. So, if you are interested in hearing my final comments on this product, I would say it costs about 1,26,000 and the competition is intense at that price point. The Acer Nitro 5 is an excellent choice. It is slightly more expensive, costing roughly about 1,30,000, but it also features an RGB keyboard and a 1TB SSD. Additionally, I recently saw the MSI Crosshair 15 laptop listed on Amazon. It has the same specification as the Dell G15, but a higher 140W is 30,60 a 65Hz Quad SD panel and an RGB keyboard. It also features DDR4 RAM. However, the sum you would pay is actually worth the price of 1,13,000. Then there is the MSI Vector GP66, which is priced similarly to the Nitro 5, but has a 240Hz Full SD IPS panel with 100% sRGB coverage and is a good option for content creators and has the most premium build under 1,30,000 budget. Then there are two more options that are excellent. The first is the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 which is a great option if you want a laptop with really good cooling system. It has the same specification as the G15 but a 16 inch 165Hz display and DDR4 RAM instead of DDR5. It performs similarly to the G15 but at a lower price point and is available on Amazon for about 1,6000,000. The Asus Stuff A15 is the final option and the laptop I recommend, Pew, which is Ryzen 7 6800H and a powerful than 12700H. However, the price you will be paying for the stick. Costing just around 96,000, this makes it best bang for the buck laptop of this this year. It also has a higher 140W 3060. So if your budget is around 90 to 95,000 and you want a gaming laptop with good battery backup, then A15 is a great choice and my personal favorite. So that pretty basically sums up the review of Dell G15. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, a like would be appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.